All right, guys, welcome to RC Mojo. A couple of weeks ago, I asked if you'd like to see a proper plane kit build, not an ARTF, but going from a box of wood to the final model. And well, four of you said you would, which is more than enough excuse for me to buy another kit. <laughs> I looked at quite a few of the traditional kits, I've been wanting to build one from Ben Buckle for a while, but I came across the Seagull model's Challenger. Anyone who does planes will know Seagull as an ARTF manufacturer. They make some fairly good quality models, but now they've tried their hand at kits, essentially taking an ARTF Challenger and supplying it unbuilt. I'm thinking it should all fit together nicely, as for manufacture, a bad kit would cost them a lot of time. Well, that's the theory anyway. As well as the Challenger, they've also made a kit from the ARTF Boomerang. Quite a popular trainer, but we've got the Challenger, so let's have a look in the box. And quite a sturdy box it is too, should keep the bits intact during shipping. First item out is a full size plan, obviously printed from the CAD drawings, all on one enormous sheet of nice thick paper, like it. A plan makes it so much easier to work out how the model goes together. You can measure clearances on the plan and check the model as you go. Unfortunately, it's far too big for me to open up in my little white box. It's all there though. Nice. Next is the manual and a list of other models. Okay. The manual is also available on the Seagull website with color pictures. Makes it a bit easier to see what's going on. I've not looked at it closely, but I've heard it misses a few steps and some parts don't even get a mention. So it should be a fun build. Here we have a pot of white glue. Interesting. I think I'll use my own though, especially as we'll be needing some epoxy and cyano to build the kit. Might as well get some branded white glue too. Actually, coming all the way from, I believe, Singapore, I'd have thought there might have been a chance the pot could leak in transit. Hmm. Tail surfaces, nice and thick. Good hard balsa, do nicely. Aluminium undercarriage, feels quite sturdy and it's painted white. Neat. The fuselage parts and a strip of sandpaper. It's a bit coarse, but nice to see it included. Feels like it has some quality to it. The wood all feels fairly good. Got some ply and balsa bits here. The fuselage side bit is split though. Looks like the tape was put on a little bit tight. Nothing a drop of thin cyano won't fix though. Here's the canopy. I'll leave it in the bag for now to avoid greasy fingerprints. Looks quite nice. The wing pack, there's a lot of wood in there, some ply, but it's mostly balsa. Couple more bits of balsa, probably fillets for the tail. What's this? Looks like it's broken off somewhere. I'll have to put that to one side. This looks like a decal sheet, no doubt with a Challenger graphics and lots of seagull logos. This is neat, a little sanding block. Again, a bit coarse, it'll go through balsa like it's not there and leave quite a rough finish. But still, how often do you see a sanding block in a kit? A bit of aluminium square stock. This gets used to jig up the fuselage when building. Quite a neat trick and a bit of insight on what happens at the factory. The wing joiner tube. This is what stops the wings folding up in flight as it's a two piece wing. Should make packing it in the car nice and straightforward. Bag of bush rods. Like most ARTFs, they're straight steel rods with a Z bend at one end and a thread at the other for a clevis. They look pretty good. The big bag of accessories, we'll have a look in there later. A nice fiberglass cowl. I'll leave it in the bag though, as I don't want to get glass dust everywhere. The gel coat looks nice and smooth though, I like it. Here's the pilot, the face looks okay, but I'm really not sure about the beret. Might have to source another pilot, maybe one of those 3D printed ones. Hmm. Okay, the last bit in the box is a pair of spats, or pants if you're so inclined. They have pre-cut slots for the axle, neat. Not sure I'll use them though, as flying off grass and spats are really a good mix. Right, so that was a quick overview. Let's have a closer look at the wood. Starting, I think, with the wing pack. The two lots of ribs seem to be in separate piles for each wing. Looks like they've thought about the bundle a little bit, which is nice. There's some fiberglass tubes that get fitted into the wing for the wing joiner to sit in. All the parts are clearly marked with a number, even the bits are flat sheet. Should make finding all the bits nice and simple. Some small ply parts, all nicely cut, look like braces for the wing tips maybe, and a stopper for the wing tubes. These sheets are for the wing servos, they have some plywood pre-glued on the back. Not sure I like them though. Need to see how they fit on the wing really. 
some small plywood bits not sure where they go <laughs> there's quite a few long thin bits of plywood they have one annoying issue the zero in the part number has dropped out leaving a bit of a void most kits use a lower laser power just to mark the surface might have to plug those holes with a bit of scrap wood some more pre-glued bits somewhere on the trailing edge judging by the hinge slots another plywood strip this one's quite badly warped we'll have to be careful during assembly that it doesn't warp the wing yet more bits of thin sheeting here's an aileron nice hard balsa pre-beveled and straight like it it even has the holes cut for the control arm this looks a lot like a main spar all plywood little bit of a bend but quite acceptable more pre-glued bits this looks like it goes at the leading edge straight as an arrow though nice one of the main leading edge sheets with a rather large hole up one end interesting the wood feels pretty good should form around the curve nicely and i guess the sheeting for the other side of the wing very similar just no big hole <laughs> here's one of the wing tips with reinforcing strips pre-glued around the edge not particularly well aligned but good enough a plywood rib must be the inside face of the wing nice and sturdy the rest of the ribs are fairly thick balsa most of the meat has been removed so they'll be a bit delicate until they're part of the wing structure this one's got a pre-glued balsa doubler and this one has some plywood well that's the wing bits now for the fuselage starting at the tail all are really thick balsa with lots of holes to reduce the weight where the parts have been glued together there's some odd white stuff almost looks like some kind of filler but that will smooth off nicely when they get sanded and just as the ailerons they have the holes for the arms pre-cut interestingly both elevators have the holes saves having to make two slightly different parts i guess here's the balsa blocks we saw earlier yeah they really must be tail fillets okay here we go then the fuselage pack quite a lot of wood in this lot there's a couple of stacks of formers all plywood some strips and lots of flat bits <laughs> and look what we have here this looks a lot like where the loose bits of balsa we found earlier might go yep that's why it's good when they supply kits with all the parts in the balsa sheet stops the weak bits from coming off during packing and chipping but a bit more sino will sort this out okay this looks like the bottom of the fuselage with the three holes for the undercarriage some sort of braces hmm the rest of the fuselage bottom uh, top and side somewhere maybe <laughs> here's another pair of those maybe it's the top decking big thin bit of plywood looks a lot like the base of the top hatch and then so does this <laughs> complete with some sort of knockout optional bits does look like it will go at the front somewhere though hmm these will be the back end and the sides which neatly fit into the joints should be plenty strong enough the sides have pre-glued doublers all nicely aligned nice this one's a bit odd almost looks like the edge is a different wood feels a bit rougher need to keep an eye on that during the build this little lot has balsa and ply strips and two plastic tubes they must be the guides for the elevator and rudder push rods the first bundle of ply bits includes these bits which go somewhere <laughs> no idea where but they look like they'll interlock with some other bits if they've done it right all these should make for a stable structure even before any glue is applied these almost look like a small firewall no idea need to look them up in the instructions now this will be for the wing mounting tabs to screw in and this one for the undercarriage all the nuts are pre-glued nice and tidy now this is a firewall double ply with nuts pre-installed nice as long as your engine fits the included mount another bundle this one has quite a few small parts they might go at the tail for tail gear mounting they're all plywood not really sure a former and what looks like it fits into the back of the canopy so part of the hatch some more hatch parts again all plywood another former this one has knockout bits for the aluminium jig to run through looking forward to see how well that works another former and some braces <laughs> the servo tray cut to roughly fit standard size servos i'd hope they'll be slightly undersized though it's easier to trim them out rather than trying to add more material if you're running electric this would be the battery tray with slots in the side for some velcro straps okay the last bundle and we have a former another bit of the canopy hatch and the last two formers with holes for the pushrod guides nice 
Well, that's all the wood. While there was a couple of questionable bits and a couple of broken bits, it's not all that bad. If the bundles were strapped up with a little more care, there's no reason this kit couldn't have arrived pristine. The wood selection is fairly good, as with most kits these days, so you can't really complain there. I like it. There's one more thing to look at, the accessory pack. Seagull usually supplies some fairly good stuff. First up, the white spinner. It's the type that fits behind the prop, which I like. But with these ones, if you're not careful about trimming the spinner and flood your engine when starting, those screw posts will come clean off. I'd probably replace it with an Irvine spinner, far more robust and probably a bit lighter. The fuel tank, not huge, but should be okay for 10 or 15 minutes of middling flight. There's some silicon fuel tube, a nice addition. The tank clunk has a conical end, you don't see that too often. And of course, the usual bung, quite a good looking system. The wheels are a bit odd, I thought they had rubber tyres initially, but they're actually a closed cell foam, very light. The hub mouldings are a bit iffy, but then this is a plane, not a car, they'll work just fine for taxiing and takeoff. The tail wheel is pretty standard, a plastic mount and a small wheel. It uses this little widget to attach to the rudder. I like the tail wheel to have a bit more give in it though, so I might modify it for a rubber band coupling. Here's a few more wood bits, including the wing mounting tabs. I was expecting just some really thick plywood, but what they've done is they've laminated the plywood with a layer of fiberglass. Should be way more than adequate, like it. This is the metal parts bag. Lots of screws, axles, collets, clevises and all that stuff. And some Sino hinges, which I'm not really a fan of, so I'll probably replace them with some nice pin hinges. If you install them right, you get a much nicer surface movement. Here's the Velcro straps if you're running electric. You could probably use them to secure the fuel tank too. The last piece, the engine mount. It's nice that they've included it, but because the firewall is pre-drilled, you need an engine that will actually fit. Using a different mount would lead to having to modify the firewall, or perhaps having to scratch build a new one. Not ideal. If they left the firewall blank, it might have been easier overall. The included mount should fit 40 to 46 two strokes okay, as that's the recommended size. And of course, pretty much the most common, so it'll do the job in most cases. I'm going to fit this old OS Surpass 52, it's been around quite a while, but should pull this model all over the sky quite nicely. That is of course if it fits the mount. Oh, and it does! A little loose maybe, but the screws will be in plenty of meat, it will be just fine. Just have to watch the alignment when drilling the holes. So there we go then. Other than the end being knocked out of the bottom of the fuselage and the split in the side, I'm quite happy with the kit of bits. If enough people buy into seagull kits, they might do some more, which would be nice to have some new kits to choose from. Most of the market these days are decades old. Oh, the box art. The frame and completed plane are images of the Challenger, yes, but if you look at the CAD drawings you might notice something looks a bit off. Yes, they've put drawings from the boomerang kit on the Challenger box. Well done art person! <laughs> well, that's it for today I reckon. I'll probably do a video on this build every other video or something along those lines, with a car and truck video in between. Or if I can get enough videos queued up, I might do two a week. Now that would be something. <laughs> I've still got to figure out how to build a kit that's quite a bit bigger than my little white box. My usual building spot isn't really photogenic. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching. If you're not already subscribed, please do, and you'll get told when the next videos are ready to watch. Oh, and if you like this one, there's that good old thumbs up button you can press just below to show it. Bye guys! <laughs>